Welcome everyone. My name is Anya Gibson. I'm the undergraduate program supervisor. So um, in a few minutes, I'm going to have my staff introduce themselves. We're going to have a faculty welcome. You're going to hear a little bit about our department. Um, and we are going to go from there. We're going to, instead of the student panel, we're going to have some questions. Um, and so with that, again, I'm Anya Gibson. I'm the undergraduate program supervisor of the advising center that supports this major, the East Asian Studies major. Um, and you can find all of our contact information here on the slide where we're located when we are back in the office. Um, you are still welcome to call us, um, email us. Uh, we encourage you to follow our Instagram. We post a lot of great campus resources there, um, events, anything um, that you can connect with us. Um, and to get a hold of us during the academic year, we do have appointments and we have drop-ins as well as emails. Um, and with that, I'll let my staff introduce themselves. Hey everybody, um, my name is Brandi Fleming. I'm one of the advisors in the Advising Center and um, my background is in business and I'm really happy to be here helping you out in your first year. Hello everyone, my name is Cindy Alvarenga. I'm also one of the academic staff advisors in our Advising Center. Um, I graduated from UC Davis as well, so I'm an alum uh, and I graduate with my degree in chemistry and a minor in psychology. Um, I'm excited for you all to join us and be part of our network. Hello, my name is Joanne Pian, and uh, I'm one of the academic advisors as well. Uh, I am also a UC Davis alum. I studied, uh, I double majored in history and psychology and minored in education and just welcome to the program. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Opal. I'm also one of the advisors here in the department. Uh, again, like Cindy and Joanne, I'm an alum. I just graduated from UC Davis this past spring. Um, so I've been a student very recently and I graduated with a history major and double minors in art history and English. And I really wanna welcome you all today. Thank you so much and not here. Uh, joining us is uh, Chris Dosek. He's unable to be with us today, but another advisor you will be hearing from. Um, and then also we have a variety of peer advisors to support you during this academic year. Um, so we have lots of staff available to support you all. Um, again, I'm Anya Gibson. I too am an Aggie. I graduated with my degree in sociology, sociology organizational studies quite a long time ago, and I have a master's in education from Sacramento State. Um, and without further ado, I would like to introduce Professor um, Shaoling Xu, our, our faculty director of the East Asian Studies program. Sorry, I'm out of practice. <laughs> it took me a few seconds to turn on the mic. Um, it, it's very exciting to, every year this time, it's very exciting to have our um, new students. So it's the same here this year. And uh, um, let's see. Um, oh, it does not, okay. So I'm trying to, to look at everybody. <laughs> um, so um, this year is, so special is because of uh, the, the circumstances I want to explain. Um, but on the other hand, we have um, more faculties here today than probably um, in the past years. So I have two colleagues I want to introduce. Uh, one is um, Michael Foster, Professor Michael Foster, who is a chair of East Asia uh, language and the cultures, and then my colleague Eddie Yu from um, sociology department. So it's um, my pleasure to have all those uh, those two colleagues, and uh, I'm also a sociologist. Uh, and I study China, and also globally, I analyze uh, as many as uh, forty seven countries, and I use quantitative data. So I just published a book with uh, University of California Press. Oh, uh, Joseph is here. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, I, this year I don't teach any East Asia study related classes, but I, um, uh, I usually, I created a course on um, China, uh, probably about 10 or 20 years ago. And, and never get a chance to teach that in the recent years, but I hope to do that uh, soon. 
and my colleague uh, Eddie is teaching that class. So what I want you to um, to I want to share with you a little bit of uh, information is um, let's see. Oh, my screens, they disappear. Okay, let me see. Um, Let me go ahead and make you a yeah. co-host so you can share. Oh, right. I can share the screen. Should be able to see it now. Can you see it? See the screen? Nope. Oh, I have a little bit technical difficulty. And <laughs> um, can can you see it? Yes. Okay. Great. And um, so, um, one place that uh, I want you to share with you is. Um, our website, our East Asia Studies website, it has very rich information on all the faculty or our courses and uh, um, all the information you need. And uh, another uh, site is our uh, Facebook site. And these are some of the photos that I, I want to share with you. So these are the events uh, we have and uh, um, all the relevant information. Um, so when you come here, uh, UC Davis is a huge campus, uh, as many as 25,000 or 30,000 students, undergraduate students. So it's going to uh, be a huge pond, and you will feel like a, a tiny fish in this huge pond. Um, so, and uh, there are also, we offer many, many courses. So you will feel lost because you don't even run into your fellow students anymore. And so here, if you, uh, you uh, attend our events, such as this one, uh, the orientation, and uh, we usually have a fall reception and the winter reception, that's the time you get to talk with faculty and, uh, and our advisors over nice food, we usually serve very nice food uh, at those events. And we also host many, many events, talks, and uh, including sometimes a movie, film, uh, screening, those types of events. And uh, we also uh, disseminate information over uh, our list to serve so you are welcome uh, to all our events. Th those are great times to formulate a sense of community, get to know your fellow students, get to know the faculty, and you will feel more comfortable when you take their courses after you talk with them in person during those events. And, uh, and I also want to, secondly, I want to emphasize our faculties are incredibly friendly people. So come to our office hours uh, or attend our office hour right now. Everything is on Zoom. So attend office hours uh, over Zoom. And uh, um, I assure you they will uh, make you feel more comfortable. <laughs> and and uh, lastly, uh, East Asia Studies Program, we offer undergraduate research fellowship. So it's a great opportunity for you to join a, a faculty research project. So you work on their research project, you get a sense of um, what real research is about, and uh, you get to know the faculty better. And uh, of course you learn real skills uh, over the time. So um, I will uh, let um, Michael speak. Oh, uh, I can't see everybody, let's see. Joseph is here too, right? Any other faculty who are, I stop sharing the screen. Okay. 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 Okay, Michael, <laughs> your turn. <laughs> okay, I'll just introduce myself. I, I also want to note, uh, Yuming He is here as well. I don't know oh, if you right. saw her. 
another right, right, right. You, you mean, you mean. Uh, so uh, I, I am uh, Michael Foster. I'm the, I'm actually the chair of the East Asian Languages and Cultures Department, um, which is E-A-L-C as opposed to E-A-S, which is East Asian Studies. And there's always some confusion between those. Um, and I won't, I won't go into the distinctions, but uh, Anya and, and uh, uh, Professor Shu could do that better than I can, except to say that I think if you're broadly focused on Asia, East Asian Studies is a great place to, to begin that, that, that study. And, um, and you can take courses in things that, uh, such as sociology and, and other, other fields, other disciplines that are not necessarily offered in East Asian languages and cultures, which focuses a lot more on language and culture. Um, anyway, I won't go into the details about all that. Just uh, let me introduce myself. Um, my own research is uh, Japanese stuff, uh, Japanese culture, <laughs> particularly um, I, I do a lot. Uh, my research focuses on Japanese folklore. Um, I've written several books on Japanese monsters. So if you're interested in monsters, uh, I can tell you about them. Supernatural things, strange stuff like that. Uh, but also I do research on uh, what's called intangible cultural heritage. Uh, things like festivals, rituals, all, all, all that sort of thing. So um, that's me. And if you're interested in East Asian languages and cultures more generally, also come talk to uh, Anya, can give you some advice on where to go for all of that. But our two East Asian studies, East Asian languages and cultures really work together in so many ways. And um, I also want to just add to what Professor Xu said about the events that EAS has. Uh, they're wonderful events, really rich, uh, excellent speakers and good food when we can meet in person. But even if we can't meet in person, it's a great way to get to know what other, um, what scholarship is going on uh, around the world focusing on East Asia. Uh, it's a really great way to see people's personalities and see their focus, their, the way they're approaching certain fields and, and learn a lot. So I uh, encourage you to attend that, so thanks. And, and Professor Forster is a, uh, I'm so grateful to Professor Forster his, over his support to the East Asia Studies program over the years. And uh, he gave many, many talks. He gave many guest and uh, spe uh, speeches uh, to our students. So, um, so he's a great uh, professor to work with. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Eddie? Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm Eddie Yu. I may not look friendly, but I'm actually very friendly. So um, my, I'm a Chinese researcher. I'm in the sociology department. Um, and my research focus on the governance of the Chinese Communist Party. And as you know, it's more and more difficult to talk about that issue and even more difficult now to do research in that area. So a good number of, because of the pandemic and because of the um, declining US-China relationship. Um, I'm going to offer a class on China in the spring and we'll talk about some of those issues. Why, uh, what precipitate this tension between the two countries at this very point in time? Um, I hope some of you will be interested in the course. Um, at the same time, I'm thinking about, and I'm actually start writing a proposal for a first year seminar on Hong Kong. All of you know, the situation in Hong Kong has become quite visibly disturbing. And hopefully I will get this first year seminar approved, and then we will offer this seminar um, in the spring. Um, some of you also know that Hong Kong, or in, in fact, the Chinese government passed a national security law in Hong Kong. Um, so after the passing of this law, it will have some effect on college campuses around the world when they talk about Hong Kong issues and China issues. And we have read those articles about, newspapers articles about how Oxford, Harvard, Princeton are implementing, implementing new safety measures so that students and faculty can continue to talk about intellectual political issues in the classroom freely. Um, I hope that 
I will be able to teach a class in Hong Kong. But at the same time, I want to assure you that if I'm going forward and the campus is going forward with this class, we will have safety measures for students so that they will feel free to talk about their understanding and the issues that want to raise uh, about China and about Hong Kong. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Um, Eddie is um, a colleague in sociology department and he has uh, helped organize quite a few uh, guest speaker events in the past few years. And uh, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that you are planning to uh, propose a first year seminar. You can, you can, it, it's enough time to, to do it in the winter. <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> okay, so it, yeah, we follow your schedule. And uh, next would be our uh, Professor Yu Ming He. She is actually a rising star in our on our campus, and she is um, <laughs> a, 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 a very famous young and coming professor on campus. Um, thank you for that propaganda uh, speech. <laughs> um, so um, welcome to uh, 2020 fall quarter. This is a special year and hopefully uh, you will have a great experience despite uh, some of the very, um, you know, negative things uh, around us, uh, the pandemic and you have to uh, stay to be in lockdown, etc. Um, so we are here to hopefully to facilitate your good experience um, in this academic year. Um, as Professor Shu and Professor Foster and Professor Yi already mentioned, East Asian study is a place you can explore uh, a wide range of approaches and subject matters. Um, so please develop your own multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary approaches which will hopefully make you an acute observer and analyst and communicator. Um, as for my own research, uh, I focus on Chinese stuff. <laughs> to echo Professor Foster's self-introduction, I focus on Chinese stuff, uh, specifically Chinese cultural history. Um, and I'm very interested in media, in textual cultural interactions and textual, cultural, uh, textual visual interactions and textual visual uh, 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 relationship. Um, I'm going to offer a class next quarter um, called Great Writers of China. And we will read um, representative writers such as Zhuangzi, uh, uh, early China philosopher, all the way to contemporary Chinese writers. So welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Yuming. <laughs> so next we are going to have uh, Professor Joseph Sorensen. He um, has organized um, study abroad program and uh, there's the Japanese children's um, homes e uh, internship events, right, for many, many years. So if you are interested in study abroad, particularly in Japan, he is uh, he's the expert to go to. Thank you for that introduction. So um, I'm Joseph Sorensen. I'm a professor in East Asian languages and cultures, and I do Japanese stuff, just like Professor Foster. Uh, my focus is uh, mostly on classical literature. Um, I've worked on the relationship of painting and poetry. I do have some art history background. Uh, and I am currently working on a kind of commentary about the tale of Genji. Some of you may have heard of that classical text. So. Uh, most of my work uh, is in traditional culture and classical literature. Um, but uh, as was mentioned, I do um, frequently, though not recently, uh, run a study abroad program uh, in Kyoto. So this is a faculty-led program. Um, I do encourage you to use the resources at the International Center that we have on campus. Um, it's not certain when we'll be able to do things in person again, but it's still a great resource. And um, when things do open up, uh, it's always a great opportunity to study abroad and learn new things on the ground, on location, and uh, perhaps even uh, up your language skills in whatever language you choose. Um, 
So I do usually a spring program in Kyoto. It's a language and culture kind of great package field trip sort of thing. Um, and I do also run kind of completely separately a um, internship program that sends UC Davis students to orphanage homes throughout Japan uh, over 10 weeks of summer. And so that one also requires a little bit of uh, Japanese language background. Um, but it is a great opportunity. You only need a year or two of Japanese and uh, you know, the experience that these interns have over the summer is always quite rewarding. Um, so there will be information orientations about uh, these programs as well. Um, as far as what I teach, I'm teaching a master pieces of Japanese literature class. It's kind of a gateway course, a kind of beginner's course in Japanese literature and culture. Uh, I'm teaching that this fall and um, often Let's see. And then I think in the spring, I'll be teaching a course on traditional Japanese drama. So like no and kabuki. Uh, and uh, I invite you all to join that course as well. Um, thank you. Professor Shu, you're muted. So yeah, um, <laughs> you can you can tell that this is my first quarter uh, teaching online. So I sympathize with my students <laughs> there. Um, so lastly, our another professor of uh, East Asia Studies who is in art history, Professor Catherine Burnett. She cannot be here, but she made these slides to show you. Uh, the courses that she's teaching this year, those are uh, fascinating classes. I wish I could take, take some of those. And so those are the art history classes that she's offering this year. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Oh, I also want to share um, another screen that is, um, um, it's actually on our, uh, East Asia Studies website. Here I wrote this blog um, on why uh, we study East Asia uh, studies and what to do people do after they graduate. Um, so, um, so what can I do with a degree in East Asian studies? Uh, we also interviewed some of our uh, alumni and they talked about their experiences on campus. So um, that's, uh, hopefully that's uh, helpful information for you. Okay. Thank you so much for the EAS faculty for being here and telling us about your areas of research and the courses you'll be teaching. We will absolutely be sending all that information out for any of our EAS faculty who will be teaching this year in case you're interested in taking their courses. Um, as well as our website where you can find where their office hours if you wish to speak with them. Uh, and of course our advising center is available to you for questions about the major, your journey here on campus, your goals, 